never let us go. You'll never forsake us. Your word assures us that you've never seen the children of the righteous go begging for bread. We are never in want in our life because you are our God. So, Father, as as we spent this time worshiping you and we come to a time when we expect to hear from the messenger a message from heaven that will speak to us, our expectations are high. This is your Shabbat. This is the day you have set apart. And we are now in a different dimension, in a different space, where time seems to be irrelevant. As you minister to us things that will straighten our life out, lift us to a higher level, and cause us, in fact, to be the sons and daughters of God you've called us to be. And so, Father, it is with that expectation that we continue in your presence today to hear and to receive. We thank you, even before we hear, Abba, that there are words to be spoken that we will know no one could have known but the Holy Spirit. I thank you for clarity in delivering today and in illustrations that will bring to our mind and we will say, oh, now I understand. For it is our deepest desire, Abba, to understand your ways. We don't want to just know your word. We want to know your ways so we can live in the ways of the family of God. So we yield ourselves to you. All that has mattered to us, we cast as crowns before you, and we yield to your instruction and your love and your direction. And all of God's people in agreement said, Amen Amen and Amen. Well, glory to God, you may be seated. Did I not tell you we'd have a good time in worship if we saw ourselves with the privilege of coming into the, uh, the presence of our Abba today? Glory to God. Well, are you excited to be here today? Did you come to learn? Did you come to receive? Did you come with expectations? Now now that you've been in Abba's presence and kind of let things go away, you know we sang that, that song about casting your crowns before him and the image of the elders with their crowns. You know, in the end of... Uh, end of all of this gets wrapped up in that judgment. All your works, you are going to be judged by works. You're in the kingdom by faith, but in the kingdom there is a judgment of what you've done with your life. And all your works are going to be put in the uh, fire for trial, and everything that's wood, hay, and stubble is going to be consumed. And whatever you've done with your life, whatever you've done uh, for your Father in heaven that has been of a pure heart is going to be turned into gold and cast into a crown, and now you're going to have a crown. Now, I, I, it's a, to me, it's a very sobering thing because, uh, you know, if, if all your works are burned up, well, you're in heaven, but you have no crown. You have nothing to give him when, when everybody comes into that moment of praise and overwhelmingness. Uh, uh, you know, what do you have? Because your whole life was about you, even as a believer. Crowns are, are in, in life are things that give you status. I was singing that today, and, and I thought I may have to go into my office and uh, remove some crowns. I've got certificates on my wall, my bachelor's degree, my master of divinity degree, my certificates in the, uh, in the high-tech world for achievements. See, those are crowns. Those are crowns. You know, and, and I got thinking about that, and it's like, those are not the crowns I want. <laughs> those are not the crowns that, I, that I, I, I want to be able to present to my father. So whatever your crowns are, now the, you may be important. You may be the, the president. You may be the CEO. Uh, you may be somebody important. But you know, when you get up there, all of a sudden, standing in his importance, your importance will seem totally insignificant. 
The casting of the crown, no matter how big that crown, is a suddenly the, the realization that all that I've done that gets the applause of man compared with the glory of the king is worthless, and I'm just going to cast my crown and, and stand bareheaded before him and say the only glory I have is your glory. Amen? Did you get something out of that? All right, well, I, I think you're going to get excited today. Sit back, get on the, get on the edge of your, uh, your lap and uh, begin to say, ah, I'm expecting great things. Turn to somebody next to you and say, I'm expecting great things today. Okay, glory to God. Well, you know from last week we learned something. I'm not standing here as your pastor today. I'm standing here as a messenger. You know, sometimes uh, the message, as I prayed, is, is confronting almost, thus saith the Lord. That startles you and gets your attention. I've sat when my own pastor's preaching, and I'm hearing, thus saith the Lord, and he begins to walk around, and he walks in my direction, and I start repenting very quickly. <laughs> Lest suddenly he says, and thus saith the Lord to you, Donald. You know, it's like, ah, it's written all over. And, and, but those are, helpful. Uh, those are helpful confrontations. But other, other times, uh, the message in, is more teaching, where you, you have Abba, you have the Holy Spirit saying, you need to know this. You need to understand this. When you understand this, suddenly uh, things will come into focus. Uh, I don't know if any of you have ever seen those, those crazy uh, pictures made out of dots that look like just a bunch of colored dots, but there's a lion in there or something like that, and, and you've got to see it. And You know, I, I'm going to bring a book in sometime and pass around. I have a whole book of those. And you look at it and you say, I don't see the picture. And, and so they have all kinds of clues. You need to do this in order to see the picture. Your mind will assemble the picture with the dots when your mind says, oh, I need to focus differently. If you just look at it the way you normally do, it's just a bunch of dots. My particular way I have found that works for me is to look at it cross-eyed. You know, I hold the picture and I cross my eyes, and then suddenly, boom, there it is. You know, now once you learn to do that, you can do, do that with most of them. It becomes easier and easier and easier. I, I have friends of mine who never got it. They thought we were all making jokes on them because there's no picture there. They couldn't see a picture. All they could see uh, were, were the dots. Uh, well, in the same way, there are things in the spirit that need to come into focus. And, and my job as a teacher and as a messenger is to bring a message to make, hopefully, clear to you how faith works. And you say, well, we, we know about faith. I know, I know how faith works. Well, uh, you know, if you're honest with yourself, you realize there's many, many more lessons that you need to know about faith. Uh, I'm on a journey myself to realize, hmm, I think I need to know a little more about faith than I do. You know, Yeshua spent a lot of time teaching how the kingdom of God works. He didn't spend a lot of time talking about salvation. He spent a lot of time teaching how the kingdom works. We need instruction in the rules, the laws, the operating principles of the kingdom of God. And his favorite way of teaching was to take you from what you know into the unknown by starting with, with things familiar to you and then saying, now, therefore, you can understand. And so he told you to look at the lilies of the valley. He told you to look at the birds of the air. He said, consider a woman who lost something valuable, a coin. He talked about a man who goes on a journey and leaves others in charge while he is gone. He talked about a shepherd calling his sheep by name. That analogy not particularly familiar to us today, but in his day certainly familiar. And he said, if you can understand these things in the natural, I'm going to take you from the natural into a spiritual understanding of the kingdom of God because I want you to have an aha moment. A moment when you say, oh, now I see how it is going to work. A learned man like Nicodemus could not understand what he meant by born again. You know, what am I supposed to do? You know, re-enter my mother's womb and be born again? And Yeshua said, you're a learned man in Israel. How, how come you don't understand this? He said, look how the wind moves. So he was trying to bring Nicodemus into a great deep theological truth by telling him, forget your theology, Forget all that. Look at how the wind moves in the same way the Holy Spirit moves in the lives of people. 
Today we're going to talk about the currency of the kingdom. We've been for a year now on a series of looking at the kingdom of God, which Yeshua said is why he came to preach the kingdom of God. He told us to go out and preach the kingdom of God. And the kingdom of God, he said, is here and now. The kingdom of God is not heaven where you're going to go when you die. The kingdom of God is the kingdom of heaven in its present manifestation here in earth. And the kingdom of God has a currency. If birds, lilies, and wind can help you understand how the kingdom of God works, the earthly use of money is going to help you today to understand how the currency of heaven works. I believe this message has the ability to unlock confusion that it exists among most Bible-believing Christians as to why the promises of the Word of God do not appear to be working. Let me say that again. To the vast majority of Christians, if they're honest, once they leave the church building and, and, and go and live in their house, the promises of God do not appear to them to be working. Now, if they know about faith and they know about your words, they're never going to say that. Praise God. You never say that. Amen. Book of Malachi Yahweh says that he listened to the people in their tents complaining that it, what, does, what good does it do to, to, to serve God? They actually were saying that. And that got recorded uh, as words against them. Hopefully you know and I know not to say those things, though I continually, I'm no longer surprised, but, I, you know, people say things in their home. Well, we'll never get ahead. Well, you know, we're broke. Well, you know, and, and yet they'll sit here and they know, quote, they know, they know what the Word teaches, but it doesn't seem to be working in their life, and, and they haven't yet made the connection that it, it may not be working because they're not accurately applying the currency of heaven, which is a currency of faith. So let me give you some examples here. Let me see if I, I don't, I don't know what I did with everything. Hmm. I'm going to get my props out. Is it okay to have props? Huh? There it is. You know, when you have a bag with 20 pockets, you never know what pockets it. So if, if, if I had two pieces of paper that were white, I, I could have cut some up, and, and I said which, paper, which one is more valuable than the other, well, if they're both pieces of paper, you know, one's, one's as valuable as the other. So these are simply two pieces of paper. That's all they are. They're, they're printed. they got stuff on them, but they're two pieces of paper. But um, one is, what's that say? $50, what's that say? $100. Uh, is one of these more valuable than the other? Really, they're just paper. Now, now you, you know, a little child doesn't understand that. If I go to a two-year-old, and, and, and if, if I went to Malkia and offered her, she's not going to say, well, I want the hundred. They're just pieces of paper. In fact, if I told her that I could, she could have the hundred, or in my other hand, I had five one-dollar bills, she'll choose the five one, she'll choose the five, because all she sees there's more of those than there is of this. Do you understand that? Because she has no understanding, she doesn't understand the value. If you don't have understanding of the kingdom of God, then you have no way of evaluating what is the true value, and the world will come and offer you five of this when one of God's thing is Amen. far more valuable. Amen. That's, right. That's a sermon in and of itself. I'm not going there. <laughs> Glory to God. Now, why is the 100 more valuable than the 50? Because the 100 has the 50 in it, plus. The 100 is the 50, plus another 50. Right? Great. You're doing good. Get your thinking cap. I know you didn't come to do math today, but get your thinking cap. The 100 is more valuable than the 50. Because the hundred has the fifty in it plus. If I take the fifty out of the hundred, 
What am I left with? 50. Right? So if I say, well, I don't need the 50 that's in the 100. I take the 50 out of the 100. Now what do you have? You have 50. If you can understand that, you can understand why it is wrong to say that the New Testament did away with the Old Testament. The Old Testament is the 50, and the New Testament is the 100. The New Testament contains the the 50. If you take the 50 out, you don't have 100. If you take the old out, if you say, you know, God did away with that, that's the old covenant, I'm not under the old covenant, I don't, if you take it out, your new covenant loses its value. The new covenant is the old plus. If you take it out, then you don't have anything. Come on. That's why you're grafted in. You can't say, Paul writes, you can't say to the root, I don't need you. The root supports the branch. If you take the root out, the branch dies. It's worth nothing. And you're left with nothing till you go back to the root. Is that good? I, I, that's a warm-up. That, that's the appetizer, because we're going somewhere a little deeper than that. But I just want you to understand how money suddenly helps you understand the great theological debate about the old covenant and the new. No, there's no debate. There is no debate. The new does not do away with the old. Glory to God. So today, we're going to understand the currency of the kingdom and how it works. Money is the currency of this world. And in America, money was once backed by gold. You had gold certificates. So I I would have $100, but what that meant is it's backed by gold. I could go to the bank and I could say, I want $100 worth of gold. And they would give me the gold. The value of the money was in the gold. It wasn't that long ago that that America came off the gold standard, which meant we're no longer going to back our currency with gold. If you're China and you want to cash in a a few billion here and there of American currency for gold, we're not going to do that. We don't back it with gold. American currency now is backed by confidence in the American economy. That's scary right there in and of itself. It's like, trust us. In Germany, after World War I, uh, the, the economy went into a depression so badly that within, within days, your value of your money lost half its value. You had $100, two days later, it's only worth 50. Two days after that, it's only worth 25. I mean, it got to the point where a thousand Deutschmarks was w- worth what ten were before. In other words, it, it had no value whatsoever. So you got paid, pay attention, you got paid in a currency that had no value. Yeah, we'll bear for remember those, those stories. So watch this. Money is a currency backed by gold, now backed by confidence. Faith is a currency. And as a currency, it is backed by the Word of God. God said it. That settles it. When within the church people attack the integrity of the Word of God, they are sowing the seeds to destroy faith. When the world comes along and says, we have a standard of morality different from this, and Christians begin to say, we believe the world rather than the word, you are soon going to be a Christian whose faith does not produce anything. James writes that if you have faith and no works, what good is that faith? Can it save anyone? And yet we're in the midst of a a massive move of preaching going on out there now 
that it's talking about it's all grace and no works. But James says, if you have faith with no works, that faith cannot save you. Read the book of James. And yet that's being embraced and taught. The end result of that teaching is going to be that all the promises of God are considered null and void. They don't work for you because your faith has been destroyed because you've accepted what the world paid you. Sounds good. Makes, makes it sound good. But when it comes to going to cash the money, it doesn't have any value. Are you still with me? So I want to review very quickly something we know about faith. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6, without faith it is highly unlikely that you can please God. No, that's not what it says. It says without faith it is impossible to please God. Impossible. Impossible to please God. God doesn't say many things are, are not possible, but it is impossible to be pleasing to God unless you're walking by faith. Now, you can be born again, but you're not walking by faith. You're born again. You're going to go to heaven when you die. You're truly a child of God, but you're not pleasing to him. Remember, we were talking about intimacy with the Father. The Father cannot be intimate with you when you're not pleasing to him. Doesn't mean he doesn't love you. Doesn't mean you're not going to go to heaven. But it means that you're not pleasing to God, even though you're a child of God. And what pleases the Father is faith. Because anybody who comes to him must believe that he exists. Well, obviously, if you're a Christian, you believe he exists. And, and means there's another component. You're going to bake the cake, you need this and this and this. If you're going to please God, then you have to have faith. And faith must believe that God exists and now, of all the other ands, it doesn't say and believe in the Trinity, and believe in the deity of Yeshua. It says and, talking about God, if you want to please him, you must believe that he exists, Hebrews eleven six, and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. God is a rewarder. And when people say that the promises of God are no longer in effect, you're saying God is no longer a rewarder. You are not walking in faith. If you sit under the teaching of people who say healing's passed away, God doesn't want people to prosper, you're sitting under somebody who is denying Hebrews 11.6, you need to get out of there. Because otherwise you're going to think that way. And now you're going to use your mouth to speak that way and you are no longer going to be eligible to see the results of faith in your life because you are faithless. Are you still with me? The NET Bible says faith is being sure of what we hope for, being convinced of what we do not yet see. I'm convinced of it. Well, where is it? I'm convinced of it because the word of God says so. The Amplified Bible says faith is the assurance, the confirmation, the title deed of things we hope for being the proof of things that we do not see. I need proof. This is a proof. I need proof that God will bless me. It's right here. But I'm looking at your, your banking account and, and that, well, you're looking in the wrong place. Right. If I looked at the banking account, I'd say there's no proof that I'm overwhelmingly blessed. The heavens of have been opened and a blessing's poured out I cannot contain. If I looked at my body, I might not find proof that I walk in divine health and healing is mine. If I looked at, uh, at parts of my soul, I might not find proof that there's overflowing joy. But I don't look to my soul. I don't look to my bank. I don't look to my body. I look to the Word of God. This is my proof. And you say, well, I just won't accept that proof. Fine, live your life in your world. I'm living in this world called the Word of God, and the Word of God is the proof. That is what faith is. It is proof. Well, I have faith, you know. Well, you don't really have anything. You're just kind of hoping and wishing and praying. No, faith is the proof. When you have faith, it is proof. It's not, a, I'm hanging there in faith until I have the proof. Faith is the proof. 
I'd love to go down that trail entirely. We're going somewhere else today. You need to understand this. King James Bible, I don't often refer to it, but I like the way it does this. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Faith is a substance. In the realm of the Spirit, faith is more real than things you see now. The Spirit always precedes the natural. Hmm? Come on. A, that which is real in the faith. Faith is a substance. It's not wishful thinking. Faith is the substance of the thing hoped for. The way I used to describe it was this. Hope is a blueprint. If I have a blueprint for a house I want to build, faith is, uh, hope is the blueprint. The blueprint, I can have it and carry it all my life. I can get excited about it, take it out every day, read it, show it to people, tell people, this is going to be the master bedroom, this is going to be this. I, can, I got great hope. But you know, I can all my life be living on that hope. All my life showing that hope around. All my life I can articulate every dimension of my hope in that blueprint. But I don't have something real in my life until I put a substance to the blueprint. Until we get brick and mortar and, and, and we get wood and we get the glass for the wind. Until that's there, all that is is hope. Good hope, great hope, nice dream. Yeah, I'm glad you're excited about it, but I'll never live in it until substance comes in to that blueprint and makes it real. You can have the hope of the Word of God, the hope of the promises of God. They are great. It's a great picture in here of the life you and I can lead, and it builds up our hope. And we need to say, I got the picture, I got the picture. Now we got to apply faith to the picture, or all it is is a picture. And people share the picture year after year, and, and in the Word of Faith movement, you know, we talk about what you're believing for and what we're hoping for, and we talk it and we talk it and we talk it, but until faith gets applied to it, the substance of faith, you, you'll not see what it is, and in the end, far too many people get discouraged, because why? Because they've talked the hope, looked at the hope, shared the hope, know the hope is written there, but they never see it, and suddenly they say, that's it, they quit. They don't just quit that. They quit the church. They quit Yeshua. They quit everything because it didn't work. What it was is no one taught them how to use the currency of faith. The building material was missing. You're going to learn to do that today. Anybody excited about that? Glory to God. But you say, Pastor, how can I do this? Faith, faith sees. Faith sees. Now, now... <laughs> I don't, well, you know, faith, I, I'm believing in things I can't see. No, faith sees. That's right, it sure does. <laughs> see, if you're trying to believe in something you can't see, then you're not in faith. That's right. All you're doing is in the natural. I, 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 I'm, I'm trying to believe something's here, but it's not here. No, faith sees. Eli Elisha and, and his servant wake up one morning, and the servant looks out, and he sees the Assyrian army around to, to get his master. And he runs into the master and says, Alas, master, we're surrounded. And the master says to him, Elisha says to him, You know, those who are with us are more than those against us. And you can imagine Gehazi runs out there, uh, you know, 10,000, 20,000, 30,000, uh, one, two. Uh, you, know, uh, you know, why? Because he's seen in this realm. And Elisha says, Lord, open his eyes. And suddenly he looks out there and he sees the hills are filled with horses and chariots of fire of the army of God. Did Elijah see them? We used to say, no, he didn't. He saw them with his eye of faith. He didn't need to see them in the natural. He saw them there in the eye of faith. Faith will actually see. I told the story many times of Donna with Ashley when she was little and diagnosed with leukemia and She's in that hospital, and she's skin and bone. I mean, skin and bones. Look like a little Biafran child. Little sticks for legs, extended belly. And Donna would talk faith, and people were, people were absolutely, you know, thinking she's absolutely crazy. The psychiatrist in the hospital thought she was crazy. She's not dealing with reality. She's refusing to see what is there. And, and she would uh, talk to people, you want to come in and see Ashley if you... If you're going to be moved by what you see in the natural, you can't come in. 
And people thought that was offensive and everything. Well, you know, get over it. It was years later that looking through some pictures of those times and, and, and Donna came across a picture and tears leapt up in her eye and she looked at me and she looked at that picture she said, I never saw that. She never saw that. She saw Ashley going to school and she sent her to school and the nuns freaked out because they saw what the picture saw. She didn't, I'm sending my daughter to school. You know, she refused to treat her like a sick little girl because she didn't see her that way. When you're dealing with people who, who have deformities or issues in the physical, if, you, if that's what you see, it, then you're not operating in faith. Come on. Brother Hagen there, you know, told he was going to die at the age of 16. Was well on his way to that. Couldn't even, couldn't even move laying in that bed, just barely move his hands. He started reading the Bible, and people said he's going to get, go crazy because all he reads is the Bible. You're a young boy. Don't you read novels? Don't you read comic books? He said, no, I don't have time for that. Amazing how many people would want me to come into a hospital and pray for them while they're watching garbage on the TV. Which is it? Because if you watch that, you're going to die. No, he read the Bible, and he, sometimes it took him minutes just to be able to turn a page. And he came to Mark 11, 23 and 24. And the Holy Spirit began to minister that to him. And once that began to get inside of him, one day he's laying there and the Holy Spirit says, well, if, if that says you're healed, then you're healed. He says, yes, I believe I'm healed. Healed boys don't lay in bed all day. And he pushed himself up on the bed sitting. Took him quite a while to do this. Pushed his legs over to the side of the bed. No feeling, totally paralyzed pushed his legs over to the uh, edge of that bed and slid off that bed and immediately fell to his knees. No feeling, no feeling. All the while saying, I believed I'm healed. I believe I'm healed. I believed I'm healed. And suddenly, like a thousand needles, he described it, just penetrating his, his legs. And he said it hurt, but it felt good because he could feel. And within the hour, he was dressed and walked out into the other room. Glory to God. Faith sees it as real. You say, Pastor, how am I to believe in it? The truth is that there are already many areas in your life where you operate believing something you do not see. You operate in that. And, and the devil wants you, well, I can't do that. You're already doing it. And I need to get you from what you already know and say, well, yeah, that's true to what you don't know. Amen. Come on. Amen. If you were once good and became bad, well, then you can become good again. If you were once living without a sin in your life and now a sin's gotten hold of your life, well, if it got hold of you, then it can get out of your life. Amen. If you were healthy and now sickness came, well, if sickness came, sickness can leave. See, see, the devil wants you to think that the only things that are forever are what he says. And he'll say, no, 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 faith doesn't work. You need to start saying, it's already working in my life. I already operate on it. So I want to give you a demonstration. You're going to see a miracle today. I want to give you a demonstration of believing while I do not see, right in front of you. Believing because I'm told so, not because I see it with these eyes. Let's move back to the realm called money. Everybody say money. money. Turn to somebody and say, I think we're going to talk about money. <laughs> Glory to God. So while money is usable primarily in the five cents realm, I deal with it a lot in the realm of faith. And by that, I mean I have confidence. I am assured. That money is doing or will accomplish something, though I have no physical sight of the dollar bills at all. I don't see money, but I use it a lot. I was going to put this up on the screen, but wisdom told me I'm going into my bank account, and that might not be good to have up on the screen. <laughs> Glory to God. 
So watch this. We're going on an illustration. We're going on a little story here. Donna comes to me and she says, Sweetheart, I, I, I found an item of furniture that I really like. Uh, I, it's, I found it on Craigslist, and uh, it's right over the, uh, in Fitchburg. It's brand new, and it normally sells for $3,000, but uh, the individual wants $1,000. And I'd say, well, that's Donna. She gets everything, you know, she's, she's the great bargain person. And... Um, uh, that's great. I, she says, there, there's only one catch, and that is they need to be paid in cash. Well, okay, that, that's not going to be a problem because we have a storehouse account. Now, you have one maybe, and you call it a savings account. What, what is a savings account? That's where you put money you don't need to use right now. Okay? Uh, I call it a storehouse account. And it's there, and, and I go to a, a certain bank here in town, and with them I have a storehouse account. And so I say to Donna, uh, well, that, that's great. Uh, we, we have $1,000 in the storehouse account you can use. Donna immediately believes me. Does she see $1,000? No. She doesn't see a thing. But I told her, my word is that we have $1,000 in the storehouse account. Does that $1,000 in the storehouse account buy her the furniture? No. She can't go to the people and say, okay, I'm here to pick it up. Well, you got the $1,000. Yeah, trust me, it's in my storehouse account. <laughs> no matter how much she believes... Come on. No matter how much she believes, her faith has zero impact at this point in the transaction that must take place in this realm for her to get that piece of furniture. Come on. She's got to somehow, or we've got to, get that from the storehouse into the realm where it can be used. Are you still with me? Now, I, I have another account from which I can use it. And, and people do this in different ways. But I have a, a checking account. So, Malachi, come up here a minute, please. Let me use your... Come on, come up here. Um, this says move money. Do you see that? So we're going to move some money. So I'm going to take it out of my storehouse and I'm going to put it in my checking. So what's that say? From savings, primary savings, to, to free checking. So I'm going to go from... Tim, could you turn that on for me? I'm going to go from primary savings. I'm going to take money out of there, and I'm going to put it there. And let's go over here, and how, this is going to say how much. So what's 1,000? Do you know how to, what 1,000 is? One, zero, zero. That's what, how much is that? Oh, oops. That's 100. We need another zero. So is that 1,000 right there? No. Oh, it, need, it needs a, a dot, zero, zero. There you go. Okay. <laughs> We need the dot zero zero. Okay, good. Now, what's this say here? Make transfer. Make transfer. So when I click this, watch what happens. And it says, do you want to do this? Yes, I do. So I click confirm. And what is, can you read that? Read it. In. Her transfer was completed successfully. Okay, and what's it say there? Thousand dollars. Thousand dollars. Transferred from primary savings to free checking. Good. All right. Thank you. You can sit down. Wow, that is cool. You all see that? You all believe that happened? I believe it happened. I believe it happened. I do it all the time. 
So while we were all just sitting there in church, through the miracle of wireless and internet and all kinds of things, I just took $1,000 out of my savings account, my storehouse, and I put it over into the checking account. And the bank assures me that it's there. All right, Donna, you can go to that person now and you can tell them <laughs> that it's now in the checking. We've taken it out of the, the savings that you can't see and we've put it into the checking that you can't see. <laughs> Does she, has anything been accomplished? Does she get the furniture? No, come on. We're, we're, we're still in the area of hope I'm, I'm still operating on promises, I, I, I'm, but I have confidence in it. My confidence is that my bank's not lying to me. My confidence that when they told me there was a thousand in my storehouse that I could move, my confidence is that it's there. I did not go down to the bank, which I obviously couldn't do today. I did not go say, okay, Monday I'm going to go down to the bank and I'm going to say one, to one of the tellers, I, I need to take $1,000 out of my savings and put it in my checking. Could you take me back to the vault and show me where my stash is? And I want to see $1,000. I want to see 10 $100 bills in a little envelope called Don Long Savings. You show me the money so I have confidence, and then I'm going to take it and put it in my checking. See, see, see you know, you, you laugh. We laugh. What are you talking about? You don't do that. But you're trying to do that in faith. You're in a battle in your mind with faith that you never would accept as a battle in the real world. Hallelujah. You know, well, I don't see it. Well, I don't see it. You're never going to... Yeah, but you know how to operate in faith. I, I, you know, if, if, if the bank's lying to me, I'm in trouble. If the bank's lying to you, we're all in trouble. We have more confidence in what I saw on the internet that the bank said I had this amount, then people have confidence that the Word of God says, this, you know, I meet all your needs. I have more confidence that that's there. Come on. Have there ever been banks that have defrauded people? Have there ever been banks that have gone under? Have there ever been banks? See, if you go down there, listen, I want to see my whatever thousands you have. They may not have it. You'd be shocked. Well, actually, we only have you know, uh, $100,000 in cash. And the, what? I have $200,000 in the savings. What do you mean you only have $100,000? Where's my money? And back in the days when that's the way it were and people didn't understand, the bank is not sitting there, you know, sitting, holding your physical money. They have to make money with your money, so they've lent it out, so they don't have it. We're all operating in faith. And, and sometimes the faith in the banks has failed. But faith in the Word of God never fails. Faith in the Word of God never fails. If you would simply approach this issue today of faith, the currency of heaven like you do the bank, you'd be well ahead of the story. But we're not done. We're not done. She still doesn't have her furniture. You got that furniture, Donna? No, I have a picture of it. Isn't it nice? Can we come to your house and see it? Well, you know, by faith it's there. By faith it's there. By faith it's there. Well, it's not there in the realm she needs it. It is there by faith. But it's not in this realm by faith. It is true by faith, but it's not in this realm by faith. Are you still with me? Glory to God. So I transferred it from an unseen kingdom called storehouse into another unseen kingdom called checking. And something really took place. It really took place. In fact, this afternoon I'm going to go home and I'm going to undo what I did. That's right. Because <laughs> I don't want it sitting there, but it's serving a purpose now. Okay? <laughs> Glory to God. If I forget to do that, then my books are off because the thousand that I thought was here is now there. Okay? Glory to God. And they're going to say, well, you moved it. Yeah, I did. I literally moved something. Oh, my goodness. I literally moved something. 
Something is working. Something is happening. I don't see anything in this realm, but literally something is happening in the realm of faith. It literally happened. I don't see it, but I believe it. I took it from here and I moved it here. It's on the way to being manifested in my life. Amen. Come on. Amen. I, it literally moved. As surely as that bank will tell you, he literally took $1,000 from here and he put it there. He literally did that. I am on my way to doing something. It's in a realm you can't see. I can't see other than by faith. But my eyes of faith believe that money is no longer there. It is now over here. I did something. And if the devil says, nothing's working, it is working. I moved it from here to there. I got to get it from the storehouse of the Word of God into my faith account that I can use it. I've got to get it, transfer it from here to my faith man. My spirit man has got to get hold of this word. The word is true that he meets all your needs according to his riches and glory. That is a true word. But until you get that word from the saving storehouse account of the word of God into your faith account inside of you, into your faith man, it's not moving anywhere. It's sitting over there. You're telling everybody about your savings account. You're telling about the storehouse. You can even be preaching about what's in the storehouse. But until you move it from here into you, nothing's happened. But into you, there's still work to be done. But you've got to move it. You've got to get to a point where this isn't the word. It's my word. Where it's not, he will do that for people. He will do it for me. When I stop reading the, the word about he healed them, to, he healed me, he prospered them, he prospered me, where the promises of what he did for people here become promises of what he will do for me. I personalize it. It is my Bible, my God, my promise spoken to me. I've got to transfer it from the kingdom of the word hidden here into the word inside of me till it's mine. You ought to be glad you came already. We're not Amen. done. Amen. Most word Christians are quoting the word, speaking the word, even memorize the word. They are great at telling you where it is in the word, but it's sitting in the savings account. It hasn't moved from there into them. It's there and they're confessing it, hoping God will do something. God will do it because his word says, but faith is what you need to do. Faith is what activates it, and you haven't taken the first step, which is to make it your word. Well, that's what he said to those people. Well, that's what it says. No, no, no. This is my Abba's word and promise to me. Glory to God. Hallelujah. You still plugged in with me. All right. So, I got it. It's in the checking. But Donna says, but that doesn't help me. And I say, well, I know a way to get it out of the checking. And I'm going to get it out of the checking just for you. And bag with too many pockets. All right. I have a checkbook. I have a pen. I have a check. What's today? 421 2018 to Donna Long. One thousand dollars. O N E T H O U S A N D. Uh, and no cents. And I sign it. So, Zoriel, who's that check made out to? Can you read my writing? You know how to read a check. We're gonna, yeah. in, home school, in home school, we're going to have a lesson on checks. Remind me of that. Donna Long. Long and how much? 1000 There's a sign. <laughs> so, so, I just took... <laughs> I got the power. Don't mess up my illustration. 
So, so I have just taken by faith. I move money from savings to checking. Why? Because this is on the way to it becoming where I can use it. And actually, because it's in checking, I can now use it. Okay? There's many places in the world I can, I can take a check and use it. In, in, in Jerusalem, can you believe it? We were uh, in a store. I was going to buy something, and I was going to put it on a credit card. And it was in the, in the Muslim quarter. And the guy asked me, uh, don't you have cash? I really don't like taking credit cards. The reason he doesn't like to take credit cards is the interest they charge them is astronomical. And he said, uh, can you write me a personal check? And I'm thinking, most of the world, they don't want a personal check. Yeah. You know? And, and he says, I, I, I trust your check because it, it, you wouldn't come all the way to Israel to rip me off, is what he said. So I trust your check. He says, and, you won't, and that doesn't cost me any interest. You know? So, so a, a, a check is good. So I say, okay, uh, here you go. Thank you. <laughs> now what does she have? She's got a piece of paper. She's got a piece of paper. Now, it signifies something. She's got a, the, 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 all, all, now it's, it's changed. It, it's, it's not that I'm operating with what the word of the bank tells me. The bank told me it was there. I believed it. And because I believed, I moved it from there to there. Okay. And they told me it's been successful. Remember, he read that successfully transferred. So it's now in the checking account. So I know that check is good. That is a good check. Huh? Whatever else is going on in, 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 my, my, uh, in my thing, but, but I'm believing what they told me. Okay? If she uh, took it down there and they say it's not there, then they lied to me. Okay? But banks don't stay in business by lying. And, and so we all know what you just witnessed was things are moving. Okay? And now uh, I have transferred that to her is she excited? Does she have the furniture? Why doesn't she have the furniture? Because she doesn't have the cash. Right? Uh, I need a banker. Andrew, would you come be my banker? A bank's got to have money, otherwise it can't be a... So you, you stand there as the banker. Now... In order for her to get the furniture, something has got to move what is real. This is real. The savings was real. The che that, that's all real. But it's real in a realm that doesn't accomplish something here. It's real. Everything that's happened so far is very real. It was in a real, I and mean, I did it online. It's real. This isn't just, I could have done this just as an imagination, but I'm doing things real. Okay? So the real world out there understands that behind the scenes, Pastor Long was doing something real. He took money from here, he moved it here, and now it went into this, and then I wrote out on a real piece of paper. Everything is real, but nothing is yet seen. It's, 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 it's a truth in that realm. Absolutely, it's a truth in that realm. And if that furniture were in that realm, and that other person lived in that realm, <laughs> it'd be here. But I don't need prosperity in that realm. I need it in this realm. Amen. I don't need healing in that realm. In that realm, I'm totally healed. I need healing in this realm. I don't need the joy of the Lord in that realm. I need it in this realm. Are, are you getting pictures? Yeah. Is this beginning to make sense to you? So, for her to... For her to... Uh, get in the tangible world where we live what is real. It's real. She doesn't question it. I don't question it. But to get it into, what do we say? Into manifestation. It's got to get out of that realm into the physical realm. So could you go to the banker? Okay. Now, you're going to give him, and he's going to read it. What's that check say? Okay, so let's see what your bank has. Okay. <laughs> Okay, no, 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 wait, wait, a, wait a minute, count it out loud. $1,000. 1000 You know, when he looked in there and saw this, he said, wow. <laughs> Is this real money? 
appears so. It appears so. <laughs> okay. So she takes this, goes to the bank, and the bank gives that to you. Okay? Thank you. You can sit down. Yes, you may sit down. So, 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 now remember, we're talking about faith. What just happened when she went to the bank? What she was believing all that time in faith, she believed it. Was it right to believe it? Yep. She had the bank's word. She had her husband's word. Okay. She went to the bank, and in that one transaction, in that one moment, all the time that was spent moving it from here to there, writing the check, okay, all that process did not get her the furniture into manifestation. In that one moment, it came over into the realm where she can now use it. Now she just gets in the car, drives over there, gives the person the money, and overcomes the furniture. Are, are, are you still plugged into this? Here's my question. When did Donna have the $1,000? The minute she asked. The minute she asked. Ringing any bells to you? Yeshua said, if you believe when you ask, it is yours, then it is yours. See, if you believe, if you believe, you act. If you're not acting, you're sitting around waiting for God to do something. You're not acting. Okay? So if she didn't believe it, if she didn't believe I had access to it, she wouldn't have asked me. If I didn't believe it was in the savings account, I would not have gone in there and said, "Oh, there's five dollars in there. I'll transfer a thousand. It isn't going to work. I'm going to put those numbers in, and the bank's going to say you don't have that to transfer." No, I. She believes I have access to it. I believe I have access to it. I accessed it. I'm moving it. Things are actually happening. When was when did she have the $1,000? The minute she said, I need $1,000 for this. Your father knows what you need even before you ask. When does he give the answer? Before you ask. It's already there. It's already there in the account because, I'm getting ahead of myself here, but the Father is the one who fills the account. We, we have an earthbound Greek mentality thinking of linear thinking that causes a, us to be bound in time such that we think that it, let's take healing. Uh, you need healing in your body. So you come and you ask Abba, uh, Father, I ask in faith, believing for healing. And Abba watches to see whether you're really in faith. And then when he sees you're really in faith, he says, oh, okay. And he goes over to the great vault of heaven, and he grabs a bunch of healing, and he says, put this in Don Long's account. It's already in my account. It's already in your account. Come on. Oh, you're, you, you come and say, I repent of my sin. I receive Yeshua as my Lord and Savior. And so Yahweh goes over to the vault of heaven called forgiveness. And he says, now that you've done that, now I will give you forgiveness. But the Bible says you're already forgiven. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. 
Your, everybody in the world has an account, and forgiveness is in the account. It's already in the account. He doesn't reward you with forgiveness because you asked, but because he loves you. Because he loves you, he already provided forgiveness. It's already provided. It's in that storehouse that is invisible. But if you, by faith, won't begin to move it out of that account, it does no good for you. But it is yours. It's nobody else's. He's already said that I give you everything you need. Everything you need for life and godliness is already given to you. It's already in your account. Every answer you need is there before the question's reason. Amen. Every dollar you need is already in your financial bank account before you need it. God has already provided for his children. He's provided for those who aren't his children. Faith is what is required to get it out of that account. We get in an attitude where we begin to think that faith is is our work and that God is rewarding us because we worked faith, God rewards us. God's already provided. Faith simply draws it. Grace provides what you could not earn. Faith takes what grace provides and brings it into there. Faith is not, God doesn't reward you because of your faith. Faith has got to believe he is a rewarder. Come on. That's why we, keep that we need more faith, we need more faith. But Yeshua said, if you had faith as little as a mustard seed, you don't need great faith. If you had a, a, just a little bit of faith, but began to use it. The key is you've got to use it. You've got to start believing. And if you're going to start believing, the biggest thing is you've got to change the way you speak. If you say it doesn't work, then you've killed faith. I don't care how mighty and powerful and excited you are, you know, when you're in church, if you go out there, your mouth is stealing the faith right out from underneath you. Come on. It's already yours. Andrew Womack has a great series on that. It's already yours. Why? Because it's not what you earn, it's what the great mercy and compassion and grace of Almighty God has already provided. He put it in an account. question is, why did he put it in that account? Why didn't he put it in an earth account? Because once it's in the earth account, it can be stolen. Come on. I will feel a lot better when this is back in that account. <laughs> I, I don't need this right now as this. But I know a fact. If, if, if I put this in my wallet, it will begin to disappear. <laughs> you put it in Donna's, it will last forever. But, but that's because she asked me if I have any money and she spends out of my wallet. <laughs> She, she stores in her wallet. We were out one time and said, do you have, have money? I said, well, do you? Well, yeah. And she looks in there and she's, she had more money in her wallet than I did in mine. I really, she's just in the habit of saying, could you pay for it? Now I'd give her a $100 bill and say, well, whatever the change is, keep it in there. So she's stashing up 50 here, 40 here, and everything like that. She's never spending. She's got, she's got she does. She actually has far more money than I do. <laughs> Now, why, why, do, why don't I want that in, it, like that in my wallet? Because it can be stolen. Stolen not because the thief comes in and, and pickpockets me. Stolen because of fleshly desires. Oh, I want this. Oh, that'd be nice. I have that. I can buy that. You know, I mean, the biggest work of the thief uh, in, in, in finance is, is when, with tax refunds. I mean, people get big money in tax refunds and spend it on foolish things. And then later in the year, they can't pay their heat bill or they can't pay this bill. That money should be por portioned out. Prepay all your car insurance with it. Do, you know, put it, 
pad your envelopes with it. But no, oh, wow, look what I got. That's a lot of money. If I gave Andrew that $1,000, it would go. <laughs> wow. Wow is not what you want to hear. Wow means it's going to go. <laughs> Come on. And many of you adults as well. It would go. Your eyes lit up. I wonder if this is going to be an illustration. Is he going to start passing out $100 bills? Some of you began, to pick me, pick me, pick me. No, no. See, God puts it in the heavenly storehouse. Store up in your treasures in heaven where moth and rust can't get hold of it. Where your fleshly desires don't eat it, smoke it, drink it. Entertain it. Come on. Once it gets into this earth realm, you're now in the realm where the devil can steal it from you, make you want things, bring things across you, your path you don't need. But God says, I put it all in the heavenly account. It's in there for you already. It's already there. The windows of heaven are open. See if I won't pour out a blessing such that I can't contain it. And there were times when I would look at that and say, but I'm containing the blessing I have. You know, I'm, I, it's, not, it's not overflowing. It's not overflowing. Why am I saying that? Because I'm, I'm looking in the earth realm. I'm looking at my checking account and savings account. I'm looking in this realm and saying, Lord, it, it, it isn't overflowing. Now, I don't want to say you're lying. You said you'd pour out such a blessing I couldn't contain it. But I'm looking and I don't see it. And as this message began to get birthed in me, I realized I'm looking in the wrong place. He didn't say he'd pour it into there. He's going to put it in your storehouse, your heavenly account, where it can't get messed up by the devil. Oh, man, I want to go online and say, all right, account, heaven, 301. Yes, finances, Donald Long, yes. Uh, could you show me my heavenly? Whoa, 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 whoa. 50 years of tithing. Whoa! What the devil's stolen from me paid sevenfold. Whoa! Oh! Do you know how many millions I got in there? Oh! Isn't that great? Isn't going to pay a car payment. What am I doing? I'm sitting around waiting for it to get into the account where I need it. It's your job and mine to get it transferred from the heavenly account into the earth account. And how do you do it? By faith, by believing what the word says more than what anything else says. And the evidence you believe it is this, you will never speak against it. Never. You never will. You never will. And as long as the devil has hold of your speaking you are draining the money left and right, the healing left and right, things you hope for, hope for, stir yourself up for, but you are not applying the currency of heaven. You're trying to purchase heavenly goods with earthly finances. You're trying to get heavenly promises to work with earthly hope, earthly, oh, I wish, I wish, I wish. If you believe it, you will never say anything different. Are we on the same page? Are you glad that you came? All right. So, there's one thing I didn't cover. I, I just began to meddle with it now, but there's one thing I didn't cover in this, in this whole thing. What did we do? Let's reflect. We, we went online and we looked up to see that there was a savings account. We can't see it. I see a word that says it's there. I don't see it. It says I have so, so much money in there, I don't see the money. I see a word that tells me the money's there. And based on the fact that I believe, see, I already believe I'm operating in faith every day in the, in, the, in the banking world. Because I believe what the bank said, I moved it over into checking. And I believe that it moved. Did I see it move? No. Do I see the money? No. But I believe that the money that was once here is now over here. I choose to believe that. And because I believe that I acted on it. I wrote out a check. And I moved the money from that realm down into this realm where it can now begin to be applied. In order for Donna to apply it, 
She needed to take that check and convert it into cash. Am I more of a believer now? No. If, if, if when you're healed, I now believe it. Well, actually, you wouldn't say that because you wouldn't you have gotten excited. there. You get excited when you look and you saw the word that said it was there. I got excited when I opened up the, the, my account and went to the account. Let's see if I have $1,000. And the account said, yes. That's when I was excited. That's when I believed. That's when the word told me it was there. Now I'm just moving that out. I've got to come to the point where I can come here and I believe it. I'm excited that I have it when I realize the Bible says I have it. When it comes into this realm where I can work, it's natural. That is the natural outworking. That's no big miracle that $1,000 showed up. Because I did what was required. All along it required faith. But when it's in manifestation, I'm not, oh, I'm really excited. No, I was excited when I found out it was there. That's right. Are, are, are you plugged in? In that whole process of moving it, there's one question we never ask. Very good, Pastor Chef. How did it get there in the first place? I mean, many of you could go and do the same thing and go home this afternoon and try it and open your online account and look in your savings account and you'll say, Pastor, I did that. And there wasn't a thousand dollars there. <laughs> huh? I mean, you know, it, 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 it's, why? How did it get there in the first place? Something had to get it into that account. Come on. How did the money get in the savings account in the first place? If you put no money in the storehouse, then you have nothing to draw out of it. I remember years ago, Scott was probably, my son Scott was probably about, oh, maybe five at the time, maybe six. And uh, it was our day to do something. We had, each child had a day of the week. So every, every week, one child got the choice. You know, if, when you have nine children, that means every nine weeks, you, it's your day to choose what we're going to do as a family. And, and he wanted to do something that was going to cost money. And I said, well, I, I, don't, I, I don't have the money for that. He says, well, just go to the bank and get some. <laughs> and I realized every day, every time I went to the bank, I took Scott with me. And what did he see me do? Saw me go into the bank and write on a piece of paper and give it to the lady. And she gave me money. In his little mind, this is really cool. You need money. You write on a piece of paper how much you need. You give it to the lady in the bank and she gives you money. This is really a cool world. He didn't understand, and many adults don't understand, that before you can take it out, you got to put it in. Amen? Joseph had seven years of plenty. So what did he do? He stored it so that the seven years of famine, he would have something. Many people, if they were told there's famine coming in the seven years of prosperity, they're going to eat it all and get fat. But they'll have nothing for the lean years. Come on, you've got to put it in the storehouse. So, let's apply all this now. Let me wrap this up for the kingdom of God. Faith is the currency that makes the kingdom of God work. Faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. The only way that account gets filled is by faith filling it and it gets filled in your life out of the storehouse God has into the checking. Let's put it that way. God puts it in the in the in the savings, you got to get into your checking where you can apply. An invisible realm does you no good sitting in that Bible. Does you no good sitting in that Bible. Faith comes from hearing. In Luke chapter 5, verse 13, it says, Great multitudes came together to hear. Great multitudes has got to mean thousands of people. Now, you've been to Israel with us. We've traveled around the Sea of Galilee. 
You know, where did thousands of people come? They didn't come, you know, from what you see there now. That, that whole Sea of Galilee was surrounded with villages and cities. But it also says it came as far from Jerusalem and uh, Sidon up, up along the seacoast. Now think, if you've got to go there from Jerusalem, you've got to walk. It's going to take you three days to walk. Remember, we've driven it in a few hours, but it's going to take you three days. to. People walk from Jerusalem, from Bethsaida, from all over the places. They walk to hear this man uh, preach. They walk to hear and be healed. It does not say they came to be healed and listen. They came to hear and be healed. If they didn't hear, there would have been no healing. Come on. In Acts chapter 19, for example, uh, verses 1 and 2, while Paulus was in Corinth, Paul took the road through the interior and arrived at Ephesus. There he found some disciples and asked them, did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? They answered, no, we have not even heard there is a Holy Spirit. They did not have the Holy Spirit because no one had told them. Faith comes by hearing. hearing. They didn't hear there was a Holy Spirit, so they weren't baptized in the Holy Spirit. Thousands and millions of Christians go to churches where they don't hear about the Holy Spirit, so they don't have the Holy Spirit. They go to churches where they don't hear about healing, so they don't have healing. They go to churches where they don't hear about prosperity, so they don't have prosperity. If you go to a church where you hear about poverty, then you'll be poverty-minded. If you go to a church that says that God sends sickness to test you, you'll have sickness in your life. You will respond to what you hear. If you go to a place where you hear doubt, then there will be no faith in your account. Come on, are, are you with me? And doubt is the currency of this world. Faith is the currency of the kingdom of God. When the kingdom of God meets the kingdom of the world, there's a clash. And the kingdom of world tries to suppress the kingdom of faith. When Donna in the hospital stated Ashley will live and not die, they sent her to the psychiatrist because their world is now being confronted. They say she's got to die. Of all the other children in that protocol at UMass, every single one of them died. Why? Because the currency of the world was doubt. The currency of the world was fear. Those parents listened. They heard the report of the doctor. They heard the report of the medical establishment. Your child is going to die, and their children died, every single one of them. Ashley lived. Why? Because Donna refused to receive the report of the doctor. And she said, my child will live and not die. That world thought, therefore, she's crazy. She wasn't crazy. She was plugged into another world. You've got to make your choice. And when you sit in church and see something and grab hold of it, but then you go sit with your family and allow them to speak doubt in your life, it's as sure as if they're blowing smoke right in your face. Now maybe that's okay with you too. Jordan's never been in a smoking environment. As a child, we, we absolutely refused to put her in any environment where people smoke. I don't care if they were relatives. I don't mean to offend you, but I'm not going to let you poison my child. I literally believe secondhand smoke is dangerous. And, and my belief is demonstrated by the fact I'm not moved by feelings of kinship and allow that to happen. I re really believe that negative words steal. I'm not moved by feelings of kinship to sit with you and allow you to speak garbage into my life. I don't allow you to tell me I can't have what the words are. End of debate, I'm leaving. Bye. Amen. Now, I try to be as polite as I can, but see, I believe this. And most of you don't. Because you stay in situations that are faith-stealing. You watch movies that are faith-stealing. You don't believe it because you're not changing your life. So faith isn't working. So you come and you get frustrated because you read and hear what I say and you read the Bible and you know that's there. But it is not working. It's because you're trying to spend what is not Heaven's currency. You're not spending faith, you're spending doubt. Glory to God. It's a good place for you to say, that's not me. 
Let me say that again. A good place to say that's not me. <laughs> okay. You transfer money from the account by speaking the words. I transferred money by doing an electronic transfer. I had to do something. The money didn't just because it's there. I know it's there. I believe it's there. It was useless to me till I transferred it. In the kingdom of this world that requires that I sign a piece of paper and give it to the teller or I go online into my account with my passwords and I do something electronically. I can't say to the computer, uh, put the money over there please. I can't go stand out of the bank. I want you to move. That system doesn't work that way. That system works by electronic information. But the kingdom of God works by your words. Every word you speak, a transaction is taking place. Every word, all day long. You are either making transfers, bringing things out of the, uh, the kingdom of light and into this world, or you're speaking the words that keep those resources locked up. Glory to God. Romans 10.10, 10, it's with your mouth that you confess and are saved. The Amplified Bible says, with the mouth he confesses, declares openly, and speaks out freely his faith. If you will not speak your faith, you have no faith. You can't become a Christian by osmosis. Even the thief on the cross that day, a miraculous death moment of salvation. But he had to say, Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. If he was like the other one and cursed him or said nothing, no matter how much God wanted him in the kingdom, it would not happen. Faith speaks. You are spending every single minute of the day you talk. Faith comes by hearing but faith works by speaking. I hear, I hear, I hear. How often do you hear? I hear, I hear, I hear. I got a series of tapes I've been listening to for seven months. This morning I got up, I'm getting some clothes out and everything, and, and it was, it's Brother Keith Moore, and he said something, and I said, I, I should be used to this by now. Seven months I've been listening to that series. He said something I would have told you, it wasn't on that tape. It wasn't on that CD. How did that get on? Who got up in the middle of the night and put that on that CD? I have had to listen to that message dozens of times. I never heard that phrase. And it ministered to me. Faith comes by hearing and 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 hearing. You eat food every day, three times a day or more for some of you. Come on. How often do you hear? How often are you consciously, deliberately having faith input? Faith comes by hearing, and faith works by speaking. Faith is the currency of the kingdom of God. Everything you need to live successfully in the kingdom of God requires the currency of faith. The word of God is the source of faith. Faith comes by hearing that word. If you have little word coming in, you're going to have little faith, and little currency to gain what the kingdom of God says. We're going to go to Israel. Some people start putting money away. They start saving. Only $5 a week, but you know at the end of the year, $250. We go in two years. Now they have $500. So now they've paid everything else, but now they show up in Israel and they get $500. It's only $5 a week. But now they have $500 to buy things, trinkets, souvenirs, whatever they want. Somebody else gets up there, and they get there, and they don't have the $500. And they kind of get bent out of shape and a little jealous. Well, they've got this money to spend because they saved it. They put it in the storehouse. You did something else with it. You chose to have snacks every week. Instead of putting it for your Israel trip, you the $5. You, know, you chose to do You already had yours. Come on. Little put in the storehouse little to draw out of it. Satan is the thief who comes immediately to steal the word. Most Christians' faith account has been robbed by the enemy who comes to kill, steal, and destroy. Even with the message being brought by the messenger, the enemy is seeking to destroy that. What does he want? He wants to get it out of you. 
So he comes in the realm of the thought and says, that's not so. He keeps your mind busy debating what's being said. It's God who's speaking. But there you are. Well, I disagree with that. Well, what about this? What about that? What about that? And your mind is, is, is this battleground as the enemy's trying to destroy it before it can take root. But the biggest way he destroys it is this. You say nothing when you go out. You know the biggest thing he's afraid of? You're going to hear something here, and you're going to go out and tell one other person. Hallelujah. And it can be as simple going to work on Monday and say, hey, let me tell you something I heard in church. Not a big effort. Let me tell you something I heard in church. Then your co-workers come in. Let me tell you something I heard on TV. Let me tell you something I heard on Facebook. Let me tell you one thing I heard in church. If you went out and you said that one thing, that becomes cemented in you. That's a psychological principle. The devil shut your mouth. Well, I don't want to talk about faith. They might be offended. They want... He is stealing from you left and right because it's the speaking of the word that activates the faith. Faith comes by hearing, but it works by speaking. Glory to God. You still with me? A couple more paragraphs. We're done here. Mm. If you could see negative words, if you could see negative conversations literally stealing money from you, you would become more aggressive to hold on to what you have. I can't afford this conversation. When Jim Agard was successful in getting through to me, that, that I can't literally, financially, money-wise, my wallet, I can't afford negative conversations. I brought that into my vocabulary. You know, people would come up to disagree with me and argue with me, and I, I, quick, I could feel my, you know, you know, argue with me, I'm going to, mm, you know, and I'd say, all of a sudden, I'd see dollars. I, I, here's my wallet, and I, I could see dollars going out of my wallet. I mean, I, I, I saw that literally this argument is going to cost me a 20, a 40, or 50. This is, and I'd say to them, well, I don't know how you can afford this conversation, but I can't, so we'll talk later. And I'd turn my back and, and, and walk away. Come on, the, the devil is the greatest, you know, on the phone, on the phone spam people. Yeah, they, they call you, they don't hang up. You, you can't wait till they politely say, well, thank you for your time. They're not going to. They have little scripts. And if you say this, I say this, and there's nothing in there. Well, thank you for your time anyway. They're going to keep talking even when you say, I'm not interested. You hang up on them. And there's conversations you need to hang up on. And you won't do that until you finally see. Faith sees. I see in the realm that is so real that I, mean, I react to that as surely if somebody came up and, and tried to take the money, if somebody walked in the door right now, saw this envelope and started to steal it, I'm going to fight. Amen. You can't have that. I'm going to yell. I'm going to punch if I have to. You're not going to walk away with this. Or I'll ask our armed security to deal with it. <laughs> have armed security? Of course we do. <laughs> no. But, but, but people come in and say things and we just let them walk over our life. Stop it! Boy, but brother Pearson, George, he said that, that last week. The spirit of George got on me. <laughs> he was talking about people in his congregation and allowing negative, and he, and he yelled, Stop it! You've got to stop it. I sit here and watch. Your life is not coming to the place it would be. You're letting it happen. You refuse to bury your need to be liked by friends and relatives and other people, and they're stealing from you. Words steal. I want you to get over on the side where it works. I want you to get into the kingdom of God. Yeshua walked away from people who were negative. He walked away. Mm. Now, here's the truth. When you don't guard the input in your life, you're literally being stolen from. And in the day when you need to transfer faith into your checking account, you'll find the storehouse is empty. And you'll try to act activate a faith that you haven't been spending, you haven't been practicing, you don't... And the day comes when suddenly you need it, and it is not there. Hmm. Now here's this disturbing 
sentence from Yeshua. But it's got a positive side. Matthew 25, 29, for everyone who has will be given more, and he will have an abundance. Whoever does not have, even what he has will be taken from him. In our politically correct world, that sounds so unfair. Because we are living in a world where you take from the rich and give to the poor. That is a world destined to fail. What you need to do is say to the rich, can you teach the poor how to be rich? Because they can. You don't take from the Israelis. You say to Israel, what can you teach the rest of the world? Because they could teach the Arabs how to succeed. They could teach Gaza how to prosper. They could teach Gaza how to grow crops in the sand. And the world should stand up and say, quit trying to steal from the one that has. And ask them, please, humble yourself and be taught. The one who has, Yeshua says, is going to be given more and have an abundance. And the one who has little is going to lose it. Now, while that applies in finance, it applies in every area of life, he's speaking about faith. If you have faith and will use the faith, it'll grow. It, faith will grow if you use it. But if what little faith you have, you won't even use it. You won't even venture out to say one thing by faith in that world out there. You're going to wake up one day without faith. I am shocked by people who sat under the preaching of the Word of God in my ministry years ago. Three, four hundred people at a time receiving the Word of God, all kinds of excitement. I'm shocked when I run into them and they don't even go to church anymore. To me, that's personally shocking. What happened? They refuse to realize there's a war going on and in the kingdom of God, your words are a vital weapon because that's how faith comes. Faith is, comes by hearing, but faith is activated by your speaking. So here's your assignment for today. Oh, by the way, uh, you can look at that and say, well, um, gee, I don't want to lose my faith, and start building up your faith account. Start building it up. Make a commitment. You know, gee, $5 a week, and I could have 250 and then by two years, I'd have $500 to spend in Israel. $5 a week is all. I'm going to put it in an envelope. Well, if you started spending faith every day, develop your faith. Do something by faith every day. You can build your faith account, and you can start right now. So here's your question, in addition to the one of last week, which was, you know, what is the law and how have I done on it? Anybody do that? Hope you have. Glory to God. Ask yourself this question every day at the end of the day. What have I done today to build my faith storehouse? What have I done to build my faith storehouse? Now, you need to do that at the end of the day. Why? Because if at the end of the day you say, gee, I haven't, I can see places where I didn't do it. Uh, if you haven't at the end of the day, take two, three, four minutes while you're there in bed before you go to sleep and start making faith statements. I'm more than an overcomer. The greater one is in me than the one that's in the world. Go to bed making faith statements. At the end of the day, the last thing I do is I put faith, I build up my faith account. That's the last thing my mind hears me doing. Come on, is I'm, I, I do it all day, but at night, man, I am, I'm going to, Go to bed putting something in my faith account. Put something in your faith account. Glory to God. Did you get anything out of this message today? Father, we thank you and praise you for your love for us. We thank you for, for teaching us how to apply the currency of faith. The currency of faith. Of putting that into action. And, and we can speak that at all times, Abba. We can speak it over our lives. You are the one that is renewing our life like the eagles. You come into our very bodies, into our lives, into our spirit, man, and you stir up in us. We draw on that. We draw on that, Abba. We thank you that you have on your part already deposited into our heavenly storehouse account all that we ever need. And now we develop our faith to bring it from that account into this realm where it works in our life and you get all the glory for you are our God. And all of God's people said, amen and amen. Well, let's worship the Lord with his tithes and offerings. Glory to God. Remember, God loves a cheerful, hilarious.
prompt to do it giver whose heart is in giving. Glory to God. Let's stand to our feet and make our confession over the, the word. Father, according to your word and my faith, I honor you with my wealth and know that my barns are filled to overflowing. I have too much to store it all. I bring the whole tithe into the storehouse. I see you throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessing that I do not have room enough for it. Because I am a tither, according to Malachi 3.11, you will rebuke the devourer for me. That which comes to devour my health, devour my wealth, devour my soul, you, Abba, will rebuke for my sake. According to your word, I have been made rich in every way so that I can be generous on every occasion. I give, and I know it is given to me, a good measure pressed down, shaken together, and running over is being poured into my lap. I sow generously, so I know I am reaping generously. I know that you are giving me more than I need so that I always have all I need and more than enough for every good cause. I am a tither, and I am a cheerful giver in the name of Yeshua. Glory to God. Hallelujah. God loves a cheerful giver. Hallelujah. Remind you that... Um, in uh, May, Victor Sturski is going to be here. We're going to have, a, uh, on a Tuesday night, a uh, Standing with Israel event. Uh, we will have some flyers available that you can, you can pass out and, and share to people. A great time to invite friends. This is, this is your opportunity to do something uh, for Israel. Uh, it's not a religious Bible study, okay? It's Standing with Israel. And invite every, just don't prejudge that people wouldn't like to come, invite them anyway. <laughs> Father, we thank you that we plant in good ground. We know the harvest coming is well pleasing to you, and we salt our offerings according to your word to remind us that all that comes into the kingdom is well preserved by your mighty hand in Yeshua's name. And God's people said, Well, receive the blessing of your heavenly Father. And now may your Father in heaven, through the Holy Spirit that resides in you, release blessing in your life. The blessing to succeed, the blessing to be an overcomer, the blessing that whatever you put your hand to, it prospers. The blessing of the Father, the blessing of Yeshua the Son and the Holy Spirit rest upon your lives, equipping you, giving you strength that you might be a mighty victorious overcomer this very week in the name of Yeshua. And God's people in agreement said, Amen, amen and amen. You are dismissed.